Hello and welcome to Connect. I'm your host, Randy Shabilo. On today's show, we'll have Hillary Goff with Living Wage Saskatoon and retired Fire Chief Dan Paulson with the Rail Working Group. As always, we'd like to connect with you. Tweet Shaw TV Connect. Find us on Facebook. Email Shaw TV Connect at Shaw.ca or call us at 306 665 3796. Living wage is something that's been talked about in our community for some time now, and it sparked some interest both with those living at home, those working, and some of the employers taking notice as well. I've invited uh, Hillary Goff to talk to us today about that, give us some education about it and some of the background. So Hillary, thanks for taking time today. Thanks for having me, Randy. Give us some background about who you are and how you came to be uh, with the organization and what this all means for us. Sure. So I work as the operations manager at Upstream. We're a small nonprofit based here in Saskatoon. And we look to um, explore opportunities to make our communities, um, both here in Saskatoon and more broadly in Canada, healthier through uh, evidence-based ideas and ideas that really impact the lives of people. So um, we've been engaged with the Living Wage Saskatoon group for a while. And uh, Living Wage Saskatoon is run by a group of organizations, um, namely the Saskatoon Poverty Reduction Partnership. So I'm part of that group and I'm really uh, looking forward to talking a little bit more about living wage with you. So when we look at, uh, let's say, a snapshot in time of uh, what's happened with the cost of living and income and uh, living expenses, what can we talk about there in terms of maybe 2005, the past 10 years, let's say? Yeah, the past 10 years, we've seen a major increase in the expenses of living in Saskatoon, elsewhere in Canada as well. And uh, what that's really meant is that for a lot of families and a lot of individuals, that's meant that their wages haven't kept up to um, really match those those daily expenses. And it's become harder and harder to make ends meet. And that's really um, what we want to talk about here today. When we look at uh, the people that are involved, so we're, we're not just talking about uh, minimum wage uh, earners or uh, entry-level jobs. This is a, a pretty broad spectrum from what I've read. So a living wage is really um, talking about anybody who's earning a wage, anybody who's paying those wages, to explore what it would mean to match those wages more carefully to the expenses. And certainly there are jobs and professions who are, you know, way out paying the, the living wage. But what we're really talking about is trying to get beyond that minimum mandated legislated uh, minimum wage and talking about what it actually means for people to make ends meet and to live on their wages. And so the living wage is, um, is uh, in parallel with what we call the market basket measure. So it's a basket of expenses that everybody um, encounters in their lives. And uh, those expenses cover everything from, you know, um, from housing, transportation, food, clothing, childcare, those sorts of major expenses that each of us is trying to uh, pay every month. And so a living wage is really matched to that market basket. And in Saskatoon, what we've determined is that um, for somebody working 35, a minimum of 35 hours a week, they would need to earn $16.77 an hour to comfortably match those expenses. And we're not talking about anything frivolous. We're not talking about holidays and, and you know, a whole lot right. of savings. There's a little bit of an other category for a little bit of a buffer, an emergency fund. So I could but go to a movie or something maybe once a month? Yeah, yeah. a little bit of leisure for sure. Yeah. But um, it's really just about uh, making sure that, that we talk about what a wage match to those expenses would look like. So it is significantly more than the minimum wage at this stage. I've heard uh, from some employers that say that the minimum wage is a bit of a moot point because we uh, are not able to attract or maintain and, and retain uh, any talent at all. And that goes from anything from food service to cleaning and uh, things like that. Uh, so there's, there's kind of a natural balance, but we're still falling a little bit behind in terms of the actual cost of living and being able to stay in the community. Absolutely. Um, the, there's really dangers associated with paying low, low wages. Um, and of course, the, the attraction of paying low wages is, is there, right? Wages are a major expense in a business's operations. Um, but, you know, businesses that have paid a minimum wage will see the downfalls of, of doing that or, or paying wages that are below a living wage. They'll see they'll have um, increased turnover. And that's a very costly thing in a business. Um, 
every business owner knows the headache um, and also the time investment of, you know, searching for new employees, retraining those employees. Um, and, and those are the things that we can really talk about reducing when we pay a wage that allows employees to have the the confidence to know that they're going to be able to pay those bills at the end of the month, that they're going to be able to, you know, get their kids to daycare every day because their car is reliable or they have that bus pass that they need, and that they're going to be able to get to their jobs and be ready to work. Um, and that's really, uh, that's the difference between paying a living wage and something below that is that confidence factor that uh, employers can then have and or employees can then have and then employers can also have in their employees. I think that's important to touch on because if uh, if someone's not stressed out about maybe I'm going to start looking for a new job while I'm working at this job, there's the uh, the elimination of that risk and, and keeping the focus on the work at hand as opposed to looking somewhere else. Uh, and I, I appreciate the comment about uh, the the hard cost of retraining and rehiring because sometimes that, that kind of glossed over a little bit, but there are some significant costs with that. Uh, when we see some of the uh, the definitions, we, we mentioned about minimum wage, living wage, and, and basic wage. Can, can you help us navigate and educate us on what we're talking about in each of those categories? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The terminology yeah. can be really tricky. Yeah. Um, so minimum wage is something that everybody's familiar with. It's a legislated minimum. Nobody can pay, be paid below that level. Um, a living wage, as I said, is is uh, is in line with the expenses in a given community. And so that m living wage varies depending on the community that you're living in. So it really is a local number. Um, and in Saskatoon, as we said, it's sixteen seventy-seven an hour. Now, a basic income is a different concept that we've heard a lot about in the media lately. And that's an income that's provided by government. Um, to ensure that nobody falls below a certain level and so that if they were earning below that they would be topped up. And so it's um, a bit of a response to social assistance programs and some of the failures of, of how those programs are administered and how some people are falling through the gaps there. Um, but it's a different concept than a living wage. A living wage is not meant to be legislated um, and it's really about a conversation with employers about how they can best support their employees but also support their businesses in the ways that we talked about by having their employees really invested in their businesses and often seeing um, profits increasing and uh, and some really good recognition for, you know, being excellent employers by by supporting their employees in this way. I can see that uh, that conversation happening with uh, employers and employees that you know sometimes this type of work may not be worth that much to pay per hour, but on the back end of it, with someone you know turning over as frequently as they can be, there there's that cost factor. Absolutely. We've, implied, so. we've spoken with local business owners who have chosen to pay a living wage and sometimes above even in the retail sector and and, and what they've really seen is that they've had lower turnover um, and they've also seen that their employees are more invested in, in their work when they come to work um, and that those employees then have the freedom in their time off to go and pursue things that they're really passionate about um, and to show up to work happier <laughs> and you know really want to be there and that's really um, a big difference and it can um, it can really improve the customer service that your employer employees are providing um, to your customers and it can result in in higher profits and it can result in a great reputation for your business and and it's really important for business owners to consider what the costs of paying low wages are because that turnover is so costly and such a headache and uh, you know so this is We've we've heard from business owners that they really see the benefits when they start to you know have a conversation with their employees about you know what aren't you able to do because of how much you're earning here and you know how could we work together to make sure that you have what you need and you can pay your bills and you can come to work fully ready to invest in the work that you're doing here. Yeah, that's a fair statement. If uh, if an employer has a an issue with an employee who's always late because they're working three jobs and work till two in the morning and are trying to come in at seven, I, I think that just makes sense. Absolutely, and it's not yeah. even unheard of to hear of employers uh, or sorry employees not showing up to a shift because they couldn't afford the bus fare. I mean, no employer wants to yeah. find out that that's why their employee didn't show up to work. So 
that's the other thing to consider is that living wage isn't necessarily just about wages. There's an opportunity to reduce some of those costs and some of those day-to-day -day burdens that employees are facing. And so sometimes that can mean a car share program at your workplace mm -hmm. so that um, we've spoken with a local, local business owner who has made a car available for his employees during their work day so that if they have to, you know, do, do errands, do yeah. errands yeah. related to the business or sure. run and pick up their sick kid from childcare or whatever it is, they can do that and don't have to afford another vehicle at home or don't have to afford that bus pass if maybe they choose to bike or walk to work because they live nearby. And so, you know, it's those things that it's not necessarily just about wages. And so what part of what Living Wage Saskatoon wants to encourage is a conversation between employers and employees, especially in small businesses, when sometimes the solution doesn't necessarily have to be wages. Of course, we want people to think about wages that are higher than minimum wage and wages that are close to that living wage. But there's a number of ways to solve the problems that employees are facing sometimes in you know, being their best at work. What do you see going forward? Uh, I mean, there's obviously some living wage calculations across Canada. They're not all going to be the same. Yep. Uh, what do you see going forward, you know, for the next year or two uh, with living wage? Just more awareness or what's going to happen? Absolutely. So living wage has been taking off across the country, across North America, in Europe, the UK. It's a, it's a, it's a widely talked about subject in a number of areas. And, and you're right, um, the living wage isn't the same everywhere. In Calgary, it's $18.15. In Vancouver, it's as high as $20. Um, but in Moostra, it won't be the same, right? Um, so it is important for us to be able to calculate those living wages. And, and we're working to um, you know, make sure that we're equipped to be able to calculate living wages in communities outside of Saskatoon. Regina has a living wage calculated already and we're going to be updating that number for um, as the years go because it does change over time uh, based on expenses and other things that that go into it. So we're certainly looking to keep the numbers updated and and make numbers available for other communities when that's when when we're equipped to do that. But we're also looking to equip employers with information on this um, and living wage yxe.ca we have a report on there um, that really covers a lot of what we talked about today and how those numbers and uh, and is available for anybody to go download if they like. Um, but we're also going to be putting together some toolkits for employers to consider, you know, how they might start to work towards a living wage in their in their workplaces. And at a certain point, we'll also be offering an accreditation program uh, so that folks can be recognized for being excellent employers and paying that living wage. And, and really, um, in places where we've seen a lot of living wage um, precedent, you end up seeing people supporting living wage businesses because they're interested in supporting businesses that are excellent to their employees um, and seeking jobs at living wage, uh, at living wage jobs, right? Um, and so, you know, we'd like to work towards that. And, and that's something that we want to work with employers on. So we're really inviting people to, you know, be in touch and to check out what we have on our website. And we're going to be, you know, creating materials to help them engage in, in the idea of living wage in their businesses shortly. I think it sounds reasonable. and I think we're on our way. And I really want to thank you for all the background work you've done on this. Well, it's been a team effort and I really appreciate you having me here today. Good stuff. We'll be right back. <laughs>